I cannot deny that this guitar is so beautiful. I can stare at it for hours. I cannot deny that the tone coming out of this guitar is immaculate. This guitar is a work of art. And now, I am willing to give it up. Because no matter how hard I try, I just can't seem to fall in love with it. And even if it shines with gold, the spark is no longer there. I will explain how and why in this video. It is a 2017 Gibson Les Paul Special DC, or double cut, part of the historic collection. Finished in TV black gold. This guitar is a very limited production run of only 50 pieces. That was what the store told me and verified on some posts on the web. It has all the vintage appointments, solid mahogany body, nitrocellulose finish, rosewood fingerboard, long tenon, hide glue fit, perloid dot inlays, gold hardwares, 50s wraparound tailpiece, Cluson Deluxe tuners, custom P90 pickups, hand-wired pots with bumblebee capacitors, and comes with custom shop hard case. I bought it in Belgium at the Stars Music Shop in 2022. I was on a work-related trip at the time. I visited two shops when I was there. My initial target was a Gibson gold top with P90s. But I saw this Les Paul special double cut and it caught my attention because of its strange black finish. I tested it out together with the gold top. Both sounded good. I then called my wife for advice on what to get. The decision factor was the rarity of the guitar. The gold top, Les Paul, is quite common, but the black gold finish on a special double cut is not. So I got it. Plus, there is a tax refund, and the gold top is much more expensive than the double cut black gold. The problem. It's been almost a year since I got the guitar. I played with it, and compared to my other guitars, did side-by-side -side tone testing, and it really sounded heavenly. Yes, it sounded heavenly, because using the word good is an understatement. But the main problem is that I am not keen to play it, mainly because of its physical design. It's the body is too small, which I find it uncomfortable when playing it, especially on sitting position, which I usually am. And the nitro finish on the neck is really sticky. And this oftentimes becomes a barrier to inspiration and me not enjoying the playing. Another thing, though it is not a major one, but it definitely has an impact, is that it is too perfect in aesthetics. It was too beautiful to begin with. Though, it is what attracted me in the first place. Problem is that I am becoming more aware, way too aware and conscious when playing it. I was afraid that I might bump it or scratch it. And the last thing is, I have other guitars that besides being well-crafted and beautiful, inspire me to play. It is like I can't put it down. I can lose track of time. With this guitar, I always become aware of my playing time, especially when the next stickiness comes in. Solution. So, I had to let it go. But on my own terms, I won't sell it way below the current market value but I won't make too much profit, just enough that it won't be ridiculous. A price where someone who's really into this guitar collection will be interested. So I posted it on Facebook Marketplace 
on December 24. Immediately, I had several messages. And come Christmas morning, I had an offer. A fair offer, I think. It's a trade with another guitar, plus cash. Besides the fair offer, the guy is also a fan of Gibson Specials, and I am sure he'll appreciate it. Here's what I've learned from this experience. 1. Gibson Custom Shops are really good guitars, especially the Historics. They are crafted really well. 2. Gibson holds value. You can gain profit or, in the worst case, just break even to return your investment. This is mostly true for rare and limited models. So, if you plan to invest in guitars, select those that will be rare or are made in limited numbers. They can hold value. 3. Those Gibson Historics are works of art. Before, I dismissed, or to put it bluntly, I hated the concept of historic guitars. My reaction to them is that they are too expensive and only gullible or purest people will buy them. But once I got one, my view changed. They are really pieces of art. I am still amazed that recreations of the original models in terms of specifications and details could be transformed into works of art. I now wonder if the first designs of these guitars were perfect even at the beginning. It's like that they got it right way back decades ago. 4. I won't collect guitars, just for collecting sake. The piece should give me inspiration and let me react in interesting ways every time I pick it up. I know, this could be difficult, especially with today's YouTube hype, like the hype on the PRS DGTSE. I did not fall for it. I think this is where I trust the instincts I developed over those many transactions I had in buying and selling guitars. 5. I won't get guitars that are so beautiful that I will be constantly conscious of them getting scratched or dinged. Perhaps the answer to this are the relic models. 6. Sell your guitar while you still have the capacity to sell it at a profit. This could be tough. But if you know that you are not a collector of guitars for display only, and that you are just a buy, enjoy, and sell person, then you must have the courage to let go. This is the only way for you to get more guitars. 7. If possible, sell guitars to people with the same interest in the guitar. It's art that we are passing on. Plus, they won't lowball you. What was the guitar offered in the trade? I got some cash up front plus this soon-to-be-rare guitar. It is a Fender Limited Edition Parallel Universe Jaguar Strat. I like its look, and it is somehow rare. I don't think Fender will do these models again. This is a beautiful guitar. I can stare at it for hours. Wait, am I just repeating myself? Hmm, what do you think? Did I make the right move to sell it? And for the reasons I mentioned? Do you feel the same about some of your guitar acquisitions? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, enjoy your guitar. <laughs>